read someplace that uh, you, uh, when you wake up in the morning, uh, if you're awake, God's still got something else for you to do, so get out of bed and get it done. Our own foundress was Mother Marianna Brunner. She was a 68-year-old woman when she founded our community, and she had raised six children. And she gathered women together to pray. And, uh, but it was not just prayer, you know, it was also then reaching out to the poor, especially orphans in that day and widows. And it's so much a part of our Eucharistic community of, of being nourished and fed. You know, as Jesus did at the Last Supper, Brianna Brunner did it, and I think we're defined by that too, of feeding the people, whether it's spirituality or whether it's just basic bread and food that they need for the human condition. She used to walk up and down the streets of Switzerland and pass out bread to, to, to the poor. She was very in touch with the needs of her time. She just had a presence about her, and young women women started coming and praying with her and the next thing you knew there was like a group who were um, sort of a prayer community. Her, her main thing was to uh, be of service to, to those that nobody wants. The poor people, they would come begging at her door and they knew she would pass out bread. Even her family, her children said, Mom, why do you save the best for the poor and we take what's left? She said, because they have nothing. They have nothing, and you can give that up, you know. So she taught them from beginning on to be of service. And I think that's the main thing that we've carried on throughout the years. We've always been of service, always been there to meet the needs of the time. We began in, in Switzerland, um, and uh, some insightful women are through an invitation I'm a bishop here in Ohio. We ended up in, in uh, Ohio, and um, this is where we've been, and a community developed. Those sisters really lived a hard life. I, I mean, when you read some of the stories of the things they did, it just is unbelievable. But always prayer was the main focus of their life. They worked out in the fields or whether they were working with the cows or whatever they were doing to support the community. Uh, you know, prayer was the core of what they did. There is a sense of joy in, in the sisters in the community and you just, you feel it. I, I would hope people would find us joyful and um, that's such a need in today's world. And I think the other word would be hope, because if we don't hope for the future, for, for the resurrection time to come, um, then some of the stuff we do is just stuff. Anybody can do it. If it's, it's our reason for doing things, it's the why behind that I think the sisters uh, try very hard to get to the core of why we do what we do. Uh, Life-giving, uh, caring, uh, hardworking, um, dedicated to uh, a creator that believes in them and she in him or her. Uh, after that, what else is needed? Our goal is to um, serve uh, the people of God and therefore, of course, serve God in um, redemptive aspect. We serve in any way, in many ways, uh, to help liberate people. And uh, I personally think that's a, a good way to go. <laughs> I think we're women who feed, women who give life, women who love intensely and passionately. So we're more than just a contemplative community, we're a very apostolic community also. But I think that that's the beautiful blend that we have, that we're not just contemplative and we're not just apostolic, but we blended the two so beautifully of prayer and service. Yes, I was inspired as a, a child um, by the Sisters of the Precious Blood. Um, teaching has always had a place in my heart, education. 
Um, so I taught for a while, but um, currently for the last 18 years, I'm going on my 19th year, um, I've been uh, principal at St. Christopher School here in uh, the Dayton community, the Vandalia area. And, um, you know, like I said, I, there's been the freedom to explore and to kind of become the person that I wanted to be in the ministry that I wanted. And I just, I love being in a school. I love the um, people that I work with, the children that I minister to, um, the families of that community. My ministry is at uh, St. Bernardine's Medical Center in San Bernardino, California. I'm uh, assistant manager of the spiritual care department. So I'm a chaplain. I chaplain um, the neonatal intensive care. So pray, pray for little babies that are struggling with life. And um, I'm able to talk with their parents, mom, dad. And then I also chaplain the ER. I chaplain in the stress of that room. I, I see that as a way of bringing precious blood spirituality, that, that kind of recon, that reconciling presence where death and life are meeting, where people are struggling for health, uh, where people are struggling with, why is this happening to me? Um, why did God do this? They're, they're asking some very hard questions in the midst of illness. So how can I bring the presence of God to that? I guess my life as a sister is, is um, a ministry that kind of brings in the salary, but my life is more than just what I do at the hospital or in wherever I may be doing ministry. There's always something else to do to, pre to bring that presence, to bring the God presence someplace else. Eh, mi ministerio, eh, mi trabajo, eh, es desarrollar un servicio a la Iglesia de Chile a nivel de la Arquidiócesis de Santiago. Eh, soy secretaria ejecutiva de varios departamentos que entregan su pastoral en la Arquidiócesis. Catequesis, espiritualidad, santuarios. Y eso ha, también ha ido enriqueciendo mi vida. Eh, me ha ayudado a profundizar eh, los dones de nuestra Iglesia, el servicio de nuestra Iglesia y también me ha ayudado a mí como persona eh, en un crecimiento eh, personal de un encuentro más profundo con el Señor en la vida diaria, en la vida diaria, con las personas, en la pastoral que vamos desarrollando. Uh, ha sido una, una riqueza profunda. Y yo lo voy desarrollando con mucha alegría, con, con mucha eh, libertad y esperanza en que lo que vamos entregando como iglesia, lo que vamos entregando como en, en nuestra pastoral, eh, lo que, el grano de arena que yo voy aportando desde mi espiritualidad va a, a haciendo que eh, el reino de Dios se vaya construyendo aquí, ahora. Almost 30 years ago, I became involved in pastoral ministry. And I, my life just, it was just tremendous because I really loved being able to be directly involved with the people. And pastoral ministry is that. And so then later after my pastoral ministry, just the last ministries I was involved in in San Diego was I was a volunteer chaplain at the county jail. I was working with abused women and their children, and also with the Cairo Southside movement, which is beautiful, and it's for women coming out of incarceration. I'm a math coach, okay? But why I'm there is hopefully to give people a sense of, of spirituality. I know a little bit about native spirituality, um, and I can oftentimes change the philosophies of Christian spirituality into a native spirituality theme and bring kids to, to, to better love themselves, better understand what's happening in their lives, in their families' lives. They're away from home. You know, some of them will only go home at Christmas and the end of the year. So there's a lot of that type of thing. You know, I tell kids, if, if you learn something, then you're smarter than before. You know, and that's what, that's what life's about. If I can make that, I'll be darned, you know this, and you didn't think you did, you know? And they look at me like, oh yeah, huh? 
and the light that comes into their eyes is, is worth more than anyone can give me. We're just very open to other people and try to involve other people in our lives and uh, whenever someone comes in we want to treat them with greatest respect and, and welcome them. I think we're a very welcoming community no matter when it is or what time it is. My favorite thing is I'm part of a family that cares about me, that I care about them, and we listen and we try to serve. I really enjoy having sisters and like people that, uh, that have that same uh, spirituality, the same kind of, of uh, call, call to mission especially, that you're, that you're supported and, and you're with people like, well it really is my, my family. And I guess the greatest benefit is that you're with, with people that have the sort of the same philosophy and, and spirituality and vision, especially of mission, and uh, to have that kind of support. For me, an ideal candidate for joining us would be a woman who uh, wants to be in love with God, wants to learn about God, is open to, um, to learn what that means. An ideal candidate would have to be, first of all, a very prayerful, uh, reflective person. Um, it really it would not have to have any special talents or something, but to have that desire to, to do whatever God is calling them to. You cannot. <laughs> Uh, be in religious life or even life period if you don't have a personal relationship to God that you would feel that you just want to continue this personal relation and respond as God calls. Yo creo que va en el sentido de eh, la hermana que va a vivir conmigo o que va a entrar a la comunidad. Tiene que ser yo creo una mujer eh, eh, como mencionó antes con sueños, con ideales una mujer que que vaya creciendo, porque vamos creciendo en el caminar eh, de una experiencia profunda de Dios. I think an ideal candidate um, is one that would need to see us as um, not perfect, um, and hopefully we can see that individual as not perfect, um, that we are all on a journey um, that, leads, that leads to God and a relationship with God that can be deepened because of the presence of somebody else. When a person is so sure that, that uh, all the, of your being really is a gift of God and all you have and all you are is a gift of God and then you can't be anything but humble because uh, the truth of the matter is um, you're not really your own making. We're a Eucharistic community. Um, and I think we're faith-filled women called to be a life-giving presence in the world. You know, just the whole sense of blood is a sense of life. And, you know, Jesus' whole death was to bring life to all people, you know, to give eternal life, but even a quality life here on earth. We sisters have never found anything that we can't surmount. And there is power in a group of women who decide they're gonna do something. So look out.